Hey guys, this is Jonathan from Cajun Gunworks. Today we're going to do an entire disassembly and reassembly video on the CZ P09. And this will also go ahead and cover the P07 and basically the P01 Omegas as well. Any of the Omega Lockwork guns are going to be functionally and mechanically the same. So today we're going to break it down. I'm going to show you guys step by step how to completely strip this thing if you want to install a Pro Package or if you just want to look at the inner lock work of your gun, you want to do your own polishing at the house, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is going to be one of the most informational videos you can get from it, uh, coming from guys who work on these every single day. So uh, let's get into it. Alrighty guys, so let's go ahead and get things started with the disassembly of the PO9. Um, first thing you want to always do before you mess with any gun, make sure that it's clear. You can check the chamber there and drop the hammer. Just like on any other CZ, you want to line up these lines right here on the frame of the slide. Turn it over. Give that slide stop some taps. Pop it out. Now you can take the slide from the frame. Okay, put that frame off the side. Now from here you can take out the guide rod. This is one of our stainless steel guide rods with our 13 pound recoil spring. And you could take the barrel out at this point, but I cannot because I have a parking mount machine compensator on this particular P09. So I would have to put it in a vise and so on and so forth with that. So put that up there. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take out the hammer spring down here and that's going to release most of the tension uh, going on in the internals. So I'm not going to use the fancy tools we typically use here to get this hammer spring out. I'm just going to use basically what you would have to use at the house. So I'm going to take a starter punch here. I'm going to put it on a roll of tape so the hammer is not into the ground there. I'm going to put my hand on the magwell. I'm going to push down just like that where it moves downward. I'm going to go on the other side where that hole is for that pin right there. Okay. And I'm just going to work it up and down as I am pushing that pin through until it comes out. And now pull out the hammer spring and the main spring plug. And now there's no tension on the double action or the single action or any of the internals. The next thing you want to do here is you're going to take off these safeties. Uh, this is the safety on this gun. There's also a decocker model. Well, the decocker that you can put into these models. And if you have a decocker, then what you want to do is you want to take a pick, something like that, and there's a little leg of a spring down there that you want to pop off the side where it's not under tension anymore. But because I have the manual safety model, all I'm going to do here, I'm going to get my fingernail up underneath it. I'm going to push down on the ejector and I'm just gonna give it some wiggle. So you push down the ejector, which has some play there, okay? And then you just pull it on out, all right? And now from here, what I'll do is I'll push down the trigger bar. And this is the same with the decocker and the manual safety. Push down the trigger bar, and you can just release the tension on the uh, right-hand side of the pistol itself. Now from here, you can take your finger, and you want to take out this ejector. You're going to push down, and you'll feel there's a spring underneath there. You want to push down, and then roll it out slowly. If you don't go slow with it, and you don't pull it out smoothly, this little guy right here will fly out of your, like, just fly out, and you're going to have to buy another one, because it's going to be gone forever, okay? I go ahead and pull that out with a pick or a pair of tweezers immediately. The next thing you want to do is you want to drive out this pin right here that holds in your sear, lifter, roller, and your ejector. For that, I'm going to take a punch, just put it on there. I'm going to give it one good firm tap, and it all should just come right on out. I'll put my thumb over everything so stuff doesn't go flying. As I pull out the pick, flip it upside down, let it all fall on the table there. Okay. And at this point, you have the sear spring sitting right here. I'm going to go ahead with some tweezers. Pull it out, put it down there as well. Okay. And now from here, you can take out basically the the hammer and the disconnector come in one piece. So the way that these come out is you have to pinch them together here at the top. And now you can take a punch and just push it right on out on the other side there. Pull out that pivot pin. And now the strut, hammer, and disconnector all come out in just one piece there. 
Now these are not, it's not pinned on there or anything, it just sits and rides on that pin. This is one of our disconnectors, even though you cannot tell because my brother does not do a good job of cleaning his guns. But that is our hammer mixed with our disconnector. And now you are basically done with the inside except for the trigger. So we'll go ahead and tap that out. Same thing as the SB01 video or the manual safety video in general. You want to look at the side that is most recessed. So for me, it'll be the right hand side. I'm going to flip it over here, take another punch. And again, I'm going to get one just good whack. That'll push that pin all the way through. And now that trigger return spring will fly out if you just yank that pin out there. So what you want to do is you want to turn it upside down. I put my hand over the magwell, and it'll typically come up and hit you in the hand. It's just somehow how it works. Um, now from here, I can pull up the entire trigger and trigger bar itself. Alrighty guys, now it's going to be time to disassemble the slide. And I'm only going to disassemble it to the furthest extent you would need to disassemble it for installation of a pro package again, or you know, general maintenance, I guess, if you really wanted to make sure your gun's all nice and clean, or, you know, if you accidentally jumped in a lake with it and you needed to get all the water out of it or something like that, I guess. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna tap out this retaining pin back here. Okay. And what you wanna do is you wanna hold your finger over that firing pin and the plunger, okay? Because it's our under spring tension there. Okay, you push in on the plunger and you can pull out the firing pin. And then what I'll do from here is I'll tap. I'll tap the uh, slide upside down on the ground or on the roll of tape. And what that'll do is that'll take out the plunger there. And that is basically all the disassembly you would need for the slide. If you want to adjust the weight of the single action pull the most, you want to take out the firing pin block plunger spring and put it in a reduced power one. If you want to make it heavier, then you put a heavier spring in there. If you want it lighter, then you put a lighter spring in there. So if you are installing the Pro Package and you see the uh, reduced power firing pin block plunger spring, that's where it goes. And the firing pin obviously also goes in there. But this is the entire disassembly of the gun to change out the Pro Package. Yeah, the only thing else that you maybe need to do is push out this H pin right here on the stock hammer which should just come right out like that and switch out the hammers. And that is basically the entire thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and get back started on the reassembly. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna go ahead and start up this reassembly on the slide here. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get your retaining pin. This is one of our retaining pins for the firing pin. And the stock one is just made out of basically rolled up sheet metal and it does not hold up very well especially to dry fire, but uh, when you put our pin in here, or any pin, you just wanna go ahead and get it started there with your hands, and then you wanna give it some good taps. I'd give it one more where most of it's sticking out, but you have enough started. Um, that's gonna help you in a second. Then the next thing you wanna do is you actually wanna go ahead and get your lubricant here, and you wanna put some at the bottom of the hole where the firing pin block plunger will ride. And then I'll take a little streak and I'll run it through where the firing pin rides in that channel. Now from here I'll take this firing pin block plunger with the groove cut out towards the center. Okay, and you wanna put that in there. And you wanna push it up as far as it goes. And then you wanna take the firing pin and with the channels upward facing the sights, you know, slip it on in there. And I orientate it like this so I can make sure that the flats are still facing me you want to push it past flush, not as far as it'll go, but just a little bit past flush. And then you want to take your mallet here and give it some taps in. And I'll get it to where it retains the firing pin. And then at that point, I'll turn it over. I'll grab the appropriate size roll pin, roll pin punch, and I'll give it some taps. And you want to make sure that the gap is straight up in the 12 o'clock position on our retaining pin, and you want to center it as best you can. That's pretty center there. So I'm gonna leave that alone. And you can now do a function test. You can take your punch, push on the back of the firing pin, push on the block, and if it drops, 
then it works. Okay. And from here, you can obviously take the recoil spring, slide it in where it's supposed to go with the guide rod there, and your slide is now completed. Now we're going to go ahead and start the reassembly on the frame. The first thing you want to put back in is the trigger and the trigger bar. Now this is a spring, this is the trigger bar support spring here. I took this out off camera. I forgot to take it out there for you to show you. If you're ever doing anything with just the frame, uh, you always want to take this thing out. But it just rides right down there in that little hole and it just slips right on down in there. Okay. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to take our trigger with our um, trigger bar on there. You're going to take the short leg of the trigger return spring and you're going to push it down to where it lines up with the holes. And that H pin that you took out of the hammer strut earlier that holds it to the hammer, you're going to take that H pin and use it as a slave pin. Okay. So ride it in between those two so it'll fit flush down in the frame. Now you want to go ahead and just push it on down in there. And you want to make sure the long leg is lined up in that groove there. And then how I will do this is I will pull it all the way to the rear when I line up that hole there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it gets pretty lined up if you're pushing down with your thumb up here and pulling it all the way back with your index finger. And now from here, you want to take the actual pin itself, retains the trigger, and you want to push it till it clicks. And once it, once it starts, you want to go ahead and push down on that trigger return spring. And you want to go ahead and give it a good tap there. And then from there, you can go ahead and tap it until it is flush on both sides. You can feel it actuate there. You know it's rocking and rolling. And you want to make sure that trigger bar support spring is not behind that trigger bar. Okay, you can put it in the inside, but you don't want it on the outside. Well, you can put it on the inside of the frame. You don't want it up against the wall, in between the wall and the trigger bar. Um, that just is a recipe for disaster later on. The next thing you want to do is you want to take that H pin that you used. If you're putting a new Pro package in or installing our hammer, you know you want to switch out the hammers from the stock one to ours. And you just take that H pin there, push it in there. If you have any trouble, you know, put it down on something, you know, give it a good tap with the mallet. Make sure it's pretty flush on both sides. Now from there, you want to take your disconnector. If it's our disconnector, um, or if it's the stock disconnector. And I'll go ahead and put a little bit of oil right there. So I don't have to fight with this disconnector to keep it retained on there. Okay. And just like the disassembly and the reassembly, when you drop this in here, you have to keep the hammer and the disconnector up after you line up the holes. So you want to hold it in place where you line up the holes there. And the gap on the pivot pin is actually going to go towards the right side of the gun. Okay, so for us, the far side of the gun currently. You want to line up that hole there, you get that hammer worked in there. You can give it a little, you can give it some taps if you need to. Um, let's see here. There it goes. Okay. You just gotta play with the sum until it goes in. And you want to push it in until it's about flush. Um, on both sides, it's pretty even there. And you'll know when it's even because it'll click. Just like that. And now from here, when you let that disconnector down, you want to make sure that it goes over the trigger bar. If it is behind the trigger bar, the trigger bar is in front of it, you're gonna have a really, really bad time. You're gonna have to actually strip this down again later, okay? The next thing you wanna put in is your sear spring. If you're putting in our Pro Package, I would always start out with the natural spring before you go to the red, but you're gonna take that and you're gonna put that in that main hole right there, the middle hole, right in front of the hammer. And now you're gonna take your sear Okay, and you're gonna push your sear down. You will see where the sear goes in there. Uh, there's a little cutout on a corner there, and there's little steps, step downs on the frame there, and you'll get to see that. And you want to hold it in there with your thumb, push down on that spring tension there, and then you wanna run this pin back through, starting with the narrow end. 
Okay, and you want to push it in until it can't go anymore. What's happening is that it's hitting this disconnector. So you want to take your thumbnail there, push down the disconnector, and what I'll do is I'll spin it as I'm pushing it in there. I can I can just I can control it a little bit better because you don't want it to go past flush on the outside of the sear here. Sorry guys, I had some mishaps with the footage here, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to finish putting in the roller and the lifter. So I'm just gonna push down here on the trigger bar with my thumb. I'm gonna slide that back in there. Okay. And from here, I'm gonna push down on the sear, trying to line up the hole for this pin to walk in with that lifter. Sometimes you kind of have to raise it and kind of pin it with your thumb there. Because sometimes it'll stoop down too low. But you just gotta line it up and tap it through. And what you wanna look for is inside this little gap right here, you wanna push in this pin not all the way in because then the divot that is, there's a divot that's right in here for the hook of this ejector to ride. And if you go too far in, then it won't, it'll have a little bit of a lip where this won't be able to go in or too far the other way, won't be able to go in, okay? So pay attention to that. And to put the right side, right hand side, manual safety or decocker lever in, you need to push down on the trigger bar, push in just like that. And you can let go of the trigger bar and now that is there. Now from here, we'll go ahead and put back in the ejector, just like this right here. Take the little spring, put it in that little hole. And then you can take the ejector from there and ride it in just the opposite of what you did where you rolled it out like this you're just going to roll it in like that okay and i'll take my finger here and i'll wiggle it some and just get it go all the way until it stops okay and from here if you have a decocker in your po1 or po7 there's that little hole right down here that you need to put that spring in with the short leg facing forwards okay but if we do not have that with the manual safety, so I'm now going to take the manual safety, push down on the trigger bar over here, and then push down the ejector as well. And you kind of got to work it some. You push down to that ejector, and that'll allow the safety or the decocker bar to go in completely. And you can just kind of push it all together there. Make sure it all works, and you're good to go on there. And now, we're gonna put the hammer spring back into the gun, okay? So I'm gonna drop that in there. And with the slant facing forwards, I'm gonna put that down in there. And make sure that spring is on the rod itself. Make sure the rod's not in your magazine wheel. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and push this down, and I'm going to use the punch that you used to get it out earlier. And get on top of it there. I'm gonna push it down below flush, put the pin in through the hole, and then I'm gonna work it up and down with the punch to get it where the pin is level where I want it to be at. Not level, but um, even on both sides with how much is protruding. And that guys is the entire frame reinstalled there. You can go ahead now, take the slide, put it on, line up the lines there, snap it in, give your gun a function test, and that is it, man. I would like to go ahead and reset again that this is, applies for the PO9, the PO7, and the PO1 Omega. The lock work is the exact same in all the guns. And if you can disassemble and strip one of these guns, you can do it for all of them, even though there's a difference between the polymer frame and the metal frame. I mean, it, it's, it's going to be the same thing internally. So yeah, guys, this is gonna be a complete video for the Omega pistols. If you want to install a pro package or like I said, just strip it all the way down and just see how the gun works, you can do that. Um, and if you have any questions or anything like that, leave comments and down and leave a comment down below, and let us know what you want to see next. The next one we're thinking is going to be a PO1 decocker because that is the most difficult by far. So 
you know, if that's what you're looking for, then uh, stay tuned for the next video. And if not, guys, we will see you guys later. Make sure to check out our Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube, and check out our Facebook as well. Appreciate it.